Hello everyone, thank you for being here for a reading of If Black English is in a Language, Then Tell Me What Is, written by James Baldwin. If this video helped you, or if you enjoyed it, please like it and subscribe to my channel. It helps me to be able to keep supporting you all. If you have any requests for short stories or poetry or summaries and analyses, please let me know in the comments. And just dropping a comment to say thanks or hi also greatly helps me out. Feel free to ask me any questions related to your homework that you think I can help with. Stay lit with Simply Lit. If Black English isn't a language, then tell me what is. Written by James Baldwin and published July 29th, 1979 in the New York Times. St. Paul the Vents, France, the argument concerning the use or the status or the reality of black English is rooted in American history and has absolutely nothing to do with the question the argument supposes itself to be posing. The argument has nothing to do with language itself, but with the role of language. Language, incontestably, reveals the speaker. Language, also, far more dubiously, is meant to define the other, and in this case, the other is refusing to be defined by a language that has never been able to recognize him. People evolve a language in order to describe and thus control their circumstances, or in order not to be submerged by a reality that they cannot articulate. And if they cannot articulate it, they are submerged. A Frenchman living in Paris speaks a subtly and crucially different language from that of the man living in Marseille. Neither sounds very much like a man living in Quebec, and they would all have great difficulty in apprehending what the man from Guadalupe or Martinique is saying, to say nothing of the man from Senegal, although the common language of all these areas is French. But each is paid, and is paying, a different price for this common language, in which, as it turns out, they are not saying, and cannot be saying, the same things. They each have very different realities to articulate or control. What joins all languages and all men is the necessity to confront life in order, not inconceivably, to outwit death. The price for this is the acceptance and achievement of one's temporal identity. So that, for example, though it is not taught in the schools and this has the potential of becoming a political issue, the south of France still clings to its ancient and musical Provenal, which resists being described as a dialect. And much of the tension in the Basque countries and in Wales is due to the Basque and Welsh determination not to allow their languages to be destroyed. This determination also feeds the flames in Ireland for many indignities the Irish have been forced to undergo at English hands is the English contempt for their language. It goes without saying, then, that language is also a political instrument, means, and proof of power. It is the most vivid and crucial key to identify. It reveals the private identity and connects one with, or divorces one from, the larger public or communal identity. There have been, and are, times and places when to speak a certain language could be dangerous, even fatal. Or one may speak the same language, but in such a way that one's antecedents are revealed, or one hopes, hidden. This is true in France, and is absolutely true in England. The range and reign of accents on that damp little island make England coherent for the English and totally incomprehensible for everyone else. To open your mouth in England is, if I may use black English, to put your business in the streets. You have confessed your parents, your youth, your school, your salary, your self-esteem, and, alas, your future. Now, I do not know what white Americans would sound like if there had never been any black people in the United States, but they would not sound the way they sound. Jazz, for example, is a very specific sexual term, as in jazz me, baby, but white people purified it into the jazz age. Sock it to me, which means roughly the same thing, has been adopted by Nathaniel Hawthorne's descendants with no qualms or hesitations at all, along with let it all hang out and right on, 
beat to his socks, which was once the black's most total and despairing image of poverty, was transformed into a thing called the beat generation, which phenomenon was largely composed of uptight, middle-class white people imitating poverty, trying to get down, to get with it, doing their thing, doing their despairing best to be funky, which we, the blacks, never dreamed of doing. We were funky, baby, like funk was going out of style. Now, no one can eat his cake and have it too, and it is late in the day to attempt to penalize black people for having created a language that permits the nation its only glimpse of reality, a language without which the nation would be even more whipped than it is. I say that the present skirmish is rooted in American history, and it is. Black English is the creation of the black diaspora. Blacks came to the United States chained to each other, but from different tribes. Neither could speak the other's language. If two black people, at that bitter hour of the world's history, had been able to speak to each other, the institution of chattel slavery could never have lasted as long as it did. Subsequently, the slave was given under the eye and the gun of his master, Congo Square, and the Bible, or, in other words, and under these conditions, the slave began the formation of the black church, and it is within this unprecedented tabernacle that black English began to be formed. This was not merely, as in the European example, the adoption of a foreign tongue, but an alchemy that transformed ancient elements into a new language. A language comes into existence by means of brutal necessity, and the rules of the language are dictated by what the language must convey. There was a moment in time and in this place when my brother or my mother or my father or my sister had to convey to me, for example, the danger in which I was standing from the white man standing just behind me, and to convey this with a speed and in a language that the white man could not possibly understand and that indeed he cannot understand until today. He cannot afford to understand it. This understanding would reveal to him too much about himself and smash that mirror before which he has been frozen for so long. Now, if this passion, this skill, this, to quote Toni Morrison, sheer intelligence, this incredible music, the mighty achievement of having brought a people utterly unknown to or despised by history, to have brought this people to their present troubled, troubling, and unassailable and unanswerable place, if this absolutely unprecedented journey does not indicate that black English is a language, I am curious to know what definition of language is to be trusted. A people at the center of the Western world and in the midst of so hostile a population has not endured and transcended by means of what is patronizingly called a dialect. We, the blacks, are in trouble, certainly, but we are not doomed, and we are not inarticulate, because we are not compelled to defend a morality that we know to be a lie. The brutal truth is that the bulk of white people in America never had any interest in educating black people, except as this could serve white purposes. It is not the black child's language that is in question. It is not his language that is despised. It is his experience. A child cannot be taught by anyone who despises him, and a child cannot afford to be fooled. A child cannot be taught by anyone whose demand, essentially, is that the child repudiate his experience and all that gives him sustenance and enter a limbo in which he will no longer be black and in which he knows that he can never become white. Black people have lost too many black children that way. And after all, finally, in a country with standards so untrustworthy, a country that makes heroes of so many criminal mediocrities, a country unable to face why so many of the non-white are in prison or are on the needle or standing futureless in the streets, it may very well be that both a child and his elder have concluded that they have nothing whatever to learn from the people of a country that has managed to learn so little. If this video helped you, or if you enjoyed it, please like it and subscribe to my channel. It helps me to be able to keep supporting you all. If you have any requests for short stories or poetry or summaries and analyses, please let me know in the comments. And just dropping a comment to say thanks or hi also greatly helps me out. Feel free to ask me any questions related to your homework that you think I can help with. Stay lit.
was simply lit.